All right, so here we go. Here's the bell ringer. Today is the second. Again, you should have five, two from last week, three from this week. Explain how Louis XIV expresses power and authority over France. So we just talked about the creation of this palace. Right? And what was the nickname of Louis XIV? So talk a little bit about the palace within your bell ringer response here. Note where it was located. Detail about some of the themes within the palace. It's pretty much all about him. Anyway. Maybe how much it costs in today's money. Bill.
All right. Okay. So Louis the Fourteenth. What was his nickname? What was his nickname that he gave himself? Anybody else give himself a nickname? Why did you give yourself ever? Nobody, nobody calls me Wyatt. Oh, I what a call? It's here. Clap your brothers. It's still here. Oh, okay. Paul. What's uh, his nickname? Up the sun guy. All right, yeah, the sun god, sun king, right? So we're looking at sun king. Yep, good, good, good. So with the sun god, sun king, he believed that he, well, everybody in France revolved around him. All right, so we talked a little bit about that yesterday. What? Well, what is that? So anyway, everybody revolved around, obviously, Louis the Fourteenth. That's why he gave himself this name. And uh, to show his riches, to show his wealth at the time, especially after this age of exploration, where mercantilism was strong and it was uh, big, and these European countries are becoming extraordinarily wealthy, especially with France, with all their power. They like the video stating, like I mentioned a little bit, uh, a bit ago, their standing army was the largest in Europe. So overall, when it comes to Louis XIV, he wanted to express his power in the means of creating a palace. And with Versailles, he decided to separate it from Paris, which we talked about in the start of class, because maybe an external force that might come and try to invade or let's say an internal strike, right? Maybe a rebellion, who knows? They wanted to prevent the masses from being around. So with the nobility, what would he have the nobility do? So these lords, these people of wealthier, uh, wealthier status within France. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, you have them like three days a week, stuff like that, so they were thinking. Yeah, good job. So you have them come over and stay at the Palace of Versailles, right? And uh, in doing so, he wanted to show the presence of the absolute monarch, the power of power, and how much, uh, I guess you'd say, uh, wealth he has. And he'd have them play card games to a point where they would be betting ridiculous amounts of money so that they would maybe forget about political uh, issues. Okay, so that's a way to try to maybe have someone forget about some of the concerns of the state, of the country, right? So he would have them play games. He would have them play card games. And I think that's interesting to know, okay? So there he is. He's trying to divert away from his actual duty of being a king and monarch, and maybe even answering to the people. But with Louis XIV, when you think about an absolute monarch of the time, he is one that really embodies his presence of what a king should be and what a king is. A lot of times when you see these shows, these movies, this is kind of uh, what this is pertaining to, right? This arrogance, this ego uh, that Louis especially had. All right, so with the palace, I mentioned it yesterday. In today's money, what would it be worth? What would it be worth, do you think, Parker? Yeah, right around $300 billion. I know they span it two to 300, but it's probably closer to 300 billion. You literally steal many of these artists and artisans from Italy to bring a lot of these Renaissance methods of artwork and uh, different types of materials and finalized products like windows and mirrors, because this was something unique at the time, especially with mirrors. Uh, he'd actually steal many of these artists from Italy to decorate the palace of Versailles. A lot of the rooms were plated in gold, literally. And uh, it just, again, shows his wealth, his power of the time. All right? Again, one thing to note is that the people pretty much suffered through this time. But a lot of people didn't have much to even feed themselves. And I mentioned that yesterday. Uh, a little bit, and how it was really the monarch, the king, and everybody else. Everybody was pretty much poor, living in these terrible conditions. And eventually, if this continues on, which it will, this will lead to revolution. These enlightenment viewpoints emerging uh, and starting to take hold within France, to try to push for a different political structure and political power. All right, so what else do we know about the Palace of Versailles? I already mentioned that. What else? What about his room? What we know about his bedroom? Pretty wild stuff here. Why? Go ahead. Uh, his bed was facing the east, so whenever the sun would rise, it would shine right through. Yeah, good job. Good job. So as soon as the sun would rise, it would shine right through his room. And with all the gold embroidery and plated in his room, it would shine and uh, show that his present has the sun king. Good, good. Uh, he had a lot of decorations of Apollo. Again, he's the sun king, Louis XIV, and Apollo is the sun god. So he believed himself as this high presence, this high power. Okay, a lot of the fountains, there's over 1,500 fountains surrounding the Palace of Versailles within its beautiful, unique gardens. Okay, so if you guys get a chance, check out that video lesson from yesterday. I put a video there where it actually goes to the 
walk through the gardens. It's amazing. All right, and uh, and sometimes, like I said, with his nobility, when they come visit, he be able to house over 15,000 people. I, I know it sounds ridiculous, but if you span the palace of Versailles with all the square footage, it'd be about the size of 12 football fields. So that's pretty amazing to think about how large this building, this palace really is. Okay, is there any questions here? Louis XIV. How long did he serve as the king? His mom. Modern. 70 years. Yeah, right around 70 years, 72 years. So pretty amazing, right? So a long-serving monarch, okay? And he did so with his power. All right, I thought it was interesting towards the end of the video and uh, within the textbook, if you guys got a chance to read through it, and it talked about how his grandson, uh, really on his deathbed here, Louis XIV, he talked to his grandson and said, oh, you know what, try to be a little bit more peaceful, right? Try not to have as, as many conflicts or wars with these other European countries as much as I did. And the reason for it is, again, just continuing this warfare. Chances are, this could be the decline of your country. Now. And with that, we all know where, as he said, that they're going to go through revolutions, they're going to go through strife eventually. And that's what we're going to talk about towards the end of this chapter. All right, okay. Uh, one last thing. So he actually referred to himself as the state, which, again, kind of shows about his ego, that he is the state, that he is the all higher power within France. And no one should challenge that. So again, going along his ego, his power of the time. All right, is there any questions here? This bell ring. I'm going to come around and check them um, towards the end of class here. Real quick, I was going to dive into these Russian monarchs, but I'll let you guys just look through this virtual field trip of the Palace of Versailles. Again, I don't like to focus too long on things like this, but I mean, I, it's kind of impossible just to skip over it. Right. It just shows, again, the wealth of Louis XIV, and it really is starting off this age of absolutism on a good note, right, and detailing about how these monarchs actually lived, especially for Louis XIV creating this palace. All right, so here is somewhat of a tour of the Palace of Versailles. I put this on a link here. You'll find it, modules. So you go to modules, you'll go to today's video lesson. I didn't here, let me publish it for you. I'll attach the video lesson later, obviously, when it's done loading. But you go right here to the video lesson, and I have it linked to the video lesson here at the top in the description. You just click right here, Palace of Versailles, and you should be able to tour it. So real quick, you can walk through. What room is this here? The hallway of? Oh, look at that. Hey, there's me. Oh, nice. Just joking. Anyway, so you guys can check out this hallway of mirrors and look at the elegance of this. Actually, you can dart through some rooms here too, which is pretty cool. Wow, look at this, nice. So you guys can check it out. You guys can check it out on your own. So I'll give you time to do that. And while you're looking through the palace, just have your bell ringers out. I'm gonna check through them. What's that? Because we don't have access to that. No way. That's unbelievable. Well, anyway, if you guys want to check it out up here, here, let's just, uh, I don't know, look at this. Wow. Oh, cover up, man. <laughs> okay, anyway, here's this. Look at the ceiling. It looks a lot like uh, the Sistine Chapel, right? So we just mentioned about that through the Renaissance period. And again, Louis was a Renaissance man himself, taking a lot of these artists and artisans from, from uh, Italy. There actually was a movement to try to kill Louis XIV because he was taking a lot of these artisans that were creating mirrors. So at the time, mirrors were really one of a kind, and uh, you can only get them in Italy. What's that? Yeah, Louis XIV. This is 14th. 16th is the one that gets... Yeah, so we'll talk about him soon, but yeah, this is still Louis XIV. But yeah, there was actually a coup against him to try to kill him because he took a lot of these artisans that provided and created these mirrors. And again, there's almost 400 mirrors within this room. And again, real quick, we'll talk about this room when we get to World War One. They will sign the Treaty of Versailles in this room. So that's interesting stuff. All right. So if you guys get a chance, maybe at home, if you log on to Canvas, you can check through this virtual tour of... Uh, 
of the palace. Sorry, I don't know why your iPads won't do that. It's crazy. Well, it is what it is. What can you do? All right. There you go.